Hello everyone, my name is Kimona Sotirchos and I'm a member of the Kubeflow's Notebooks Working Group. And today I'd like to give you a tour of the web app we have for managing our notebooks in Kubeflow. So we'll navigate right to the app. And as we can see, we, can, we already have a list of uh, the notebooks that exist in our, our cluster. So let's quickly jump on and create a new one. So I can show you around what you can do. Right here, the first thing that we can mess around with is the name of our notebook. Let's use ML environment, whoops. All right, so we can pick what image we want for our notebook to have. We can either pick a list of predefined images or we can even use a custom one. Oh, a small, small comment over here. All of the, the forms values can be configured from the user, from the administrator of the cluster or the Kubeflow admin. So anything here is configurable. So I'll just use the my predefined image right here because I'm comfortable with it. I'll select how many CPUs I want to allocate for this notebook. It's a kind of heavier one, so I'll give it also four, ah, let's give it just two gigs of RAM. As we can see, our notebook can have a workspace volume, which will essentially be mounted under home in Jovian. We always expect a user named Jovian for notebooks, so this is why this is read-only over here. I'd like it to be read-write once, although I can select if I want any other mode. And of course, the name of the, of the volume. This is going to be a PVC that will be created and created and mounted to the notebook. It should be a new PVC and not an existing one. I can also add new data volumes uh, that I might need to use in my notebook. For example, let's create a new data volume where we'll save some, some log files, for example. It should be, um, let's just name it logs, actually ML logs, all right. And let's use another volume for where we'll use a PVC that we've already created that contains our data sets. The volume is named data sets. And as you can see, it automatically detects that this volume exists and it treats it, it treats it as an existing volume. We can also select a list of different configurations that will be applied to the pod. For example, I might not care about accessing to a specific uh, software like Rock, but I care for my notebook to be able to connect to pipelines. So these configurations are actually some extra configurations that will be applied directly to the pod. So these can be things like environment variables that control secrets, GitHub accounts and info, for example, or Docker credentials. And I can also select the GPU, how many GPUs I want for my notebook. Let's say I would like to use one GPU. Although right now in my cluster, I don't have any, NVID any NVIDIA GPU, which is configured from my admin to show me. So right now the UI won't let me to create one. So I won't be showing you this functionality right now. So let's turn it back to none. And let's click launch. All right, finger crossed, everything's going to happen as expected. We can take a look at the status of the of the notebook. It's right now it's pod initializing, so it's good. Everything is mounted. We can see the image of our notebook as well as the actual volumes that are mounted. Here we go. It should be ready. And by clicking connect, we should we should be taken to a different tab of our beautiful notebook. As we can see, there's the there's our volume, which is an empty one for our logs, as well as a our existing data sets volume that already has our data. So let's navigate back. And but right now this is uh, with the uh, we can we just saw how we can easily spin up a new notebook and add fetch our data, connect to our existing data real quickly, or create a new volume to store our new data. And the nice thing, as you as you saw, is that we can seamlessly do this from one from a UI. We don't have to create distinct objects. Everything happens with well, with one specific flow, and we simply create a notebook. So this is one of the reasons we like this UI, and also because our form allows us to only manipulate the fields that are only necessary. We don't have to give the data scientists and expect them to know how to create Kubernetes objects. They can only change and modify the fields they care about, like the volumes, the image that contains their, their, their frameworks, etc. And they can quickly, very easily spin up a new, a, a new notebook. So 
This is the, the Notebook UI. We're, we've been using it for a lot of releases since Kubeflow 0.4, but that doesn't mean that it, it doesn't have its pain points as well. There are some things that we do, should definitely like to further improve. And one of these things, for example, is while, well, as I mentioned, the form only for, uh, can be simple for data scientists to use to create their notebooks, at the same time, it, it might be a limiting factor for more advanced users that might need to modify their notebooks for even more advanced use cases. To, meet, to tackle this, we plan on an, a, extending the form to also show the, the user a final YAML or allow them to edit the YAML before it gets applied. So a normal user can just launch their notebook with the defaults they want, or an advanced one can even edit the YAML before it gets applied so they have full control of whatever is going to be applied. So if the form doesn't provide you some options, hey, you can just edit the YAML and put them yourself. So, and another thing that we're really looking forward to, two, two things actually we look forward to implementing, is providing a distinct page so people can see the information about a, an, a specific notebook, but, but more Kubernetes things like the logs of the actual pod or, how, uh, or, or more details of the status and its conditions and how it, it currently runs in the cluster. And last but not least, one of the things that we're really talking right now and want to improve is we want to make it seamless for people to be able to run any arbitrary notebook server image they want. By notebook server, I mean things like either the Jupyter server, our studio server, or in the future, more IDs like VS Code, for example. And we'd like to make this very seamless to, to the users, users to just pick any image they want and launch it. And we're thinking different ways of having, for example, a dropdown that would say, hey, here's do you want to, to launch this type of server? Great, click it, and we'll take care of how you can just launch, launch it. So you can go and just use a arbitrary image that you found on the web or someone gave you, define the type of image it is, and simply launch the, the notebook. But these are just some of the, of the ideas that we have. Of course, we would really love to hear any future feedback, any feedback that you might have that would help us enhance the workflows we have. So if you have any ideas you'd like to share with us, please feel free to come to the Notebooks Workgroup meetings where we have weekly meetings, both Europe friendly and US friendly. And let's start over there. So thank you for sticking with me and I hope to see you again.